Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan Emmis Pitts. This is Ukraine War breaking news update for the 27th of June 2024. And of course, if you know me, as many of you will do by now, you would know I wouldn't be able to resist doing this uh, because this is huge news. This is genuinely massive news and not unexpected, uh, although the number is fairly surprising. But this has been something that has been on the cards for some time now. I've talked about it a number of times the potential for this to happen. What am I talking about? Well, the US is in talks to send Israel's Patriot systems to Ukraine. Okay, uh, brilliant. We know, we had known that there were four uh, Patriot Pac-2 systems that they had uh, rendered obsolete or not, you know, they, they were going to get rid of mothballing. And so everyone was like, oh, they could go to Ukraine. Well, it turns out that this is potentially going to happen. Financial Times reports that they, they are breaking this. Financial Times has done a really good job of reporting on Ukraine, I have to say, in, in the main. I've been pretty impressed with the Financial Times. Anyway, uh, US in talks to send Israel's Patriot system to Ukraine, transfer of up to eight batteries. It's not eight launchers, that's eight batteries. We had talked about four batteries pre previously. This um, would be huge. And it, as it says here, would mark shift in Israel's relations with Moscow. I think that bridge has been burnt now. So let's read it. I'm going to read it all to you. So the US, Israel and Ukraine are in talks to supply Kiev with up to eight Patriot air defense systems, dramatically improving its ability to counter Russian airstrikes. While not finalized, the arrangement would likely involve the highly prized Patriot systems being sent first from Israel to the US before being delivered to Ukraine. So they've got to get to the US, get sorted out, make sure they're all good to go, and then be then they'll be sent back to sent to Ukraine. The outlines of the deal, which would mark a shift in Israel's relations with Moscow, have been discussed between ministers and senior officials of the three countries, according to five people briefed on negotiations. Israel said in April that it would begin retiring its eight Patriot batteries. See again, I'd only heard four. Eight is uh, phenomenal which date back more than 30 years and replacing them with more advanced systems. But the batteries which have been used in Israel's current war with Hamas have not yet been discontinued due to concerns with tensions with the Iran-backed Hezbollah militant group uh, could thought that could erupt into a full-blown war. If realised, such a transfer would represent a step change in Ukraine's defensive capabilities. The country currently has at least four Patriot systems supplied by both the US and Germany. Ukraine has frequently requested that Western allies supply it with air defense systems, in particular US-made Patriots. Last week, the US announced that it was pausing the delivery of Patriot interceptor missiles to other nations to prioritize supply to Ukraine. Now, my guess, when we hear about things like this, is usually after they've been... So often it's they've already been sorted out and this is happening and then you get it announced when these uh, pieces of kit are already in Ukraine. And it's like, this country is going to give these to Ukraine and two days later it's on the front line. I don't think this is happening here, but I expect that this has been on the cards for for some time. And the decision to halt uh, the orders of interceptors to other countries um, to put Ukraine at the top of the list, I'm almost I bet my mortgage it was as a result of this um, this deal going through uh, and and. That now makes sense to me. Uh, Ukraine, uh, yes, yeah, so Israel has been cautious about taking sides over Russia's invasion to, of Ukraine, given the clout Moscow holds in Syria, where the Israeli Air Force often acts against Iranian proxies. There's also the case that 15% of Israelis ha speak Russian, although a lot of those will be you know, in the Russian diaspora community that's kind of anti-Putin, that's probably why they're there. Uh, there'll be a number of Ukrainians in in Israel as well, but I think there's this, Israel's got an interesting relationship with with Russia. And indeed, the rumours are that Putin has, before the war, had been receiving the very best cancer treatment in Israel uh, that that you could get. And so there are these ideas that actually there's there's that's why um, Netanyahu wasn't so. Uh, overtly in support of Ukraine. But then Hamas and Gaza erupted and Russia kind of took sides with um, with the Iranian-backed militant groups and it became more evident that really Israel should be siding with Ukraine, although there are issues with a kind of cross-fertilisation of 
uh, political rationale in supporting each side and and th- that's kind of poisoned the well a bit because there are a lot of people myself included that find overt support of Israel quite problematic because although what Hamas did was absolutely terrible the whole history of the 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 uh, the war and what Israel have done in response to that has made it quite difficult for someone like me to say yep I overtly support Israel um, I support civilians and civilians are getting hammered in Gaza now I know that's not to everyone's taste there but I think it's it's complex but what you have is two conflicts going on at the same time and you get some people particularly on a left who say I don't want to support Israel in their attacks on Gaza. And so therefore, I don't want to support giving weapons to Ukraine. And these are two very different things. Uh, Alexandria Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is a a democratic left winger. Some people the other day when I I said something in support of her saying, oh, she's X, Y and Z. Uh, she doesn't support Ukraine. Actually, she was very clear to differentiate between support of Ukraine and support of of Israel. So there is nuance there. And people who hopefully do enough thinking understand that nuance. But I just wanted to caveat that because it it is a complex relationship, both with each other is Israel and and Ukraine. I think that's why uh, Zelensky has been not very vocal about an overt support for Israel, even though he's Jewish. But then you, so you've got that relationship, relationship between Israel and Russia, and then a relationship between Israel and the US and Ukraine and the US and all other nations. So this is complex. Um, but yeah, US officials have sought to convince Benjamin Net or Benjamin Netanyahu's government that Russia's increasingly close ties with Iran, particularly in the field of military cooperation, are more a pressing concern. Uh, Washington gives Israel about $3.8 billion annually in military supports and by April had released an additional $14 billion in emergency funds for its allies since the war with Hamas broke out. Quote, it would be fortuitous if these older Patriots missiles were put up for to were, were put to good use in another theatre before they aged out, said Tom Caraco, head of the Missile Defence Project at the Centre for Strategic and International Studies think tank in Washington, quote, especially given the levels of US military aid to Israel. In other words, there could be a bit of leverage there saying, look, if you want us to continue supporting you, Israel, you need to actually help us because in the moment we're a bit uncomfortable supporting you. We we understand that that, um, Biden doesn't really like Netanyahu. Netanyahu has a very right wing government in Israel, which doesn't accord with an awful lot of democratic uh, ideals in government, although there are probably a lot of lawmakers that intuitively support Israel, there are also some is um, some democratic lawmakers who definitely don't support what Israel are doing. And so Biden has to tread this very very fine line between like what he personally thinks, what some of his party thinks, but then also what the electorate thinks. So generally in America, people are going to be pro-Israel because of Judeo-Christian um, cultural influences. And then obviously the Republicans are super in support of Israel generally. And so this is a very complex matter for someone like Biden uh, to to navigate. But I think one of the things that would be useful is that leverage of saying, look, if you do want aid to us, then you need to help out Ukraine to save us having to find eight Patriot uh, batteries. If you if you can do that, then we might give you a little bit more aid going forward. I, that, that's a lot of speculation for me, but, but it's, it makes a lot of sense. Um, OK, so to continue, while the transfer of all eight systems was being discussed, they might not all end up being sent to Ukraine. Four of the people said. Three of the people with knowledge of the discussion said Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba had held talks on the matter with his US counterpart Antony Blinken in recent weeks. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan hmm, had spoken on the issue at least twice with Andrew Yermak, the chief of staff of the Ukrainian president. The three people said, quote, Ukraine continues to work with various countries around the world on obtaining additional Patriot systems, Kaleba told the Financial Times, though he did not confirm the talks. Quote, we once again urge all countries that have such systems to provide them to Ukraine, he added, as well as discussions between US and Ukraine. A person familiar with diplomacy said there are also there are had also been direct talks between Israel and Kiev on the transfer of patriots. The US and Ukrainian governments declined to comment. Israel's Prime Minister's office referred questions to the Defence Ministry, which did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Ukraine is battling to defend against Russian missile and bombing attacks that have crippled its infrastructure and terrorised its cities. Russia's latest and most intense long-range airstrike campaign escalated in March. Israel's M901 Pac-2 batteries, and we're going to talk about these, 
uh, being PAC-2 or not PAC-3, are an older variety than many of the Patriot systems currently in Ukraine. But according to military analysts, the older model is still fully compatible with the newer ones. Crucially, Israel has also ample stocks of interceptor missiles, which Ukraine also needs, and that's going to be key, to go with the batteries, according to one person familiar with the size of Israel's arsenal. Analysts uh, also said that old Israeli interceptor missiles had a longer range and a bigger warhead than the newer Pac-3 model. And that's what I was going to come on to talk about. This could make them well suited for inter intercepting the Russian fighter jets. So it's not about taking out the ballistic missiles that the Pac-3 would be better for. These, and the, why I'm particularly excited about these, is they're much more likely to be put on front lines taking out the jets that are dropping the aviation bombs. This is freaking perfect. So they... You know, Ukraine can continue getting the odd pack three from, say, Romania, Netherlands uh, and whatnot, Germany, US, get those in place in strategically important positions around Ukraine. And if they can get eight pack two batteries and whack them on the front lines, then this makes a massive difference. Um, so uh, this could make them well suited uh, for intercepting the Russian fighter jets that have been dropping devastating glide bombs on Ukrainian cities and military positions from far behind the front lines. Pack, quote, Pack 2 is actually more useful than Pack 3 for long range intercepts against aircraft. So they'd certainly be useful in Ukraine, said Justin Bronx, senior research fellow at the Royal United Services Institute in London. Former officials and analysts said the Israeli systems would most likely be sold back to the US, which could then send them on to Ukraine. But they added that the bigger question is whether Israel is prepared to alienate its on-off ally Russia, despite Moscow's ever closer relationship with Iran. Israel had previously denied Ukrainian requests for air defense systems. It also has an agreement with Russia that allow Israeli jets to access Syrian airspace. So there are some controversial issues that st still do need to be ironed out there. But assuming this happens, and there, there's a big if there, but one would hope now this is out in the open, one would hope this is going to happen now. If Ukraine says Ukraine battle map here, if Ukraine gets eight Patriot systems from Israel, then it would be enough for Ukraine to defend almost every single major city, uh, several F-16 air bases, a number of critical infrastructure sites and have four Patriots closing nearly half of the airspace to Russian jets on the front. My thought is that you wouldn't put the Pac 2s near the back here. I don't know if Ukraine battle map didn't know whether they were Pac 2s or Pac 3s. But I would place them almost all like close enough to the front to be able to get over either the border to take out Russian jets or over well into uh, occupied Ukrainian territory airspace. Um, and then maybe some of these places that would be vulnerable to things that weren't ballistic missiles. So uh, some of the places that have most of the cruise missiles aimed at them or something like that. Uh, so you might think Odessa would be a good place around there, Odessa, Mikolaev, um, uh, so on and so forth. So I, I would, yeah, I would advise that. But the, hey, what do I know? Now, Colby Babwa says it's extremely consequential if they can close this deal. Half of Israel's patriots are ex-US Army and the other half are ex-Bundeswehr, the German Army. All are the Pac-2 uh, configuration. So what is the difference between Pac-2 and Pac-3? Well, um, here we have Copilot, the AI uh, function of uh, Microsoft here, saying the differences between Pac-2 and Pac-3 Patriot missiles are as follows. Guidance and radar. The Pac-3 has a built-in radar transmitter and guidance computer, allowing it to hit its target more accurately. Two, warhead and range. The Pac-2 has an explosive warhead and longer range against air-breathing targets like airplanes. The Pac-3 has a proximity-fused warhead with tungsten penetration rods. Uh, I... My guess at the moment without looking into this is that a ballistic missile, they would explode maybe in front of the ballistic missile and that would cause the ballistic missile to uh, be taken out with the, the kind of the shrapnel, if you like, or the tungsten rods uh, that penetrate into it as it comes onto the explosion. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, fire, firepower and reloads. Pack 3 provides up to four times the firepower and fewer reloads in Pack 2. It can defend against mass raids. So actually, you can fire more missiles with Pack 3, uh, which is obviously a great benefit. Radar support. The AAN MP PQ-53 radar set supports Pack 2 while the AN MPQ-65 radar set supports both Pack 2 and Pack 3 and with increased search and tracking capability. Now with these Patriots you should certainly be able to plug them into the existing network. Remember Ukraine had that central um, system that was the first one ever basically built um, all those letters I-A-M-B-D-S or whatever blah 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 blah. It's basically that plug and play network where you can centrally control uh, your air, well not control the air defense systems, but you can 
acquire your targets through all these different radars that will plug into the system and then work out what the best thing to blow up that target might be. And of course, the problem is that uh, it doesn't mean you'll definitely take out things like Kinjals that only pack three Patriots or maybe Sam T can take out. And so st things still get through, but there have been really good interception rates for certainly for things like Shahid drones, 86% interception rate this year. Um, and then I think increasingly at the moment, 100% or, or sort of 95 to 100% interception rate for them. So if we look at the MIM 104 Patriot Wikipedia page here and just put in, uh, do control F and put in range and see what that brings up. Let's cycle through range. So this is what we want. We uh, want this uh, nice table here that compares pack two to pack three. And the pack two has a maximum range of 160 kilometers. So that's about uh, 99 miles, 100 miles. And the pack three has, uh, depending on which pack three it is, there are two pack threes by the looks of it. Um, an MSE, so either 80 kilometers or 120 kilometers. So actually still a fairly significant difference. So that's 43, uh, sorry, 50 miles or 75 miles. So you've got 100 miles for the pack two and either 50 or 75 miles for the pack three. So taking out airframes inside or aircraft inside R Russian territory or over occupied territory behind the contact line these pack twos are actually going to be more useful and that's really what you need them for i think it's more necessary that they get stuff to take out the russian airplanes than they do to take out the get you know to take out the russian missiles at the moment assuming that they are still working on getting more pack three patriot systems which they appear to be as i say the dutch one german one and an American one forthcoming, a possibly Romanian one as well. So, you know, if all of those take place, I forget where we are with who's delivered what, but if all of that is happening while you get maybe eight, I'd be amazing, eight pack twos, then suddenly Ukraine are just one nation has enabled them. Well, no, all of those nations really, but suddenly Israel's pack two patriots have changed the game for ukraine this is really really significant and i really hope that it does actually happen uh, um and that, that israel doesn't succumb to pressure from russia uh this is a good deal for israel says colby Babwa as well the idf so the israeli defense force doesn't even like Patriot, but it's a lifesaver for Ukraine. Every Russian jet they shoot down reduces the chances that Russia will actually proceed with the proposed sale of Su-35s to Iran. Keeping those jets out of Iran makes the IAF's life much easier should they ever have to launch a major operation to strike Iran's nuclear infrastructure. The point here, and then this is quite a, a, a nice thoughtful point from Badwa, is that actually if... if Iran are going to receive some Su-35s off, uh, off Russia. If Ukraine can attrit the Russian air forces uh, significantly, then those Su-35s might not go to uh, Iran. They might be needed by Russia. Or R Iran says, actually, those planes are, aren't good enough. I don't know that Iran could, could go anywhere else to get their planes, really. But, you know, the, the, there are other ways that this will benefit Israel other than just, you know, getting rid of old old equipment to Ukraine. There, there are some maybe some knock on benefits for um, for them concerning Iranian Russian airplanes. Uh, but anyway, really good news. That's enough of me waffling on. Hopefully this was informative. Let me know what you think. Uh, fingers crossed this is actually going to happen. Um, uh, eight Patriot air defense systems and a shed load of interceptor missiles placed near the front lines will make a tremendous difference. Slava Ukraini.